What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be doing a long-term review of the General Grabber ATX and we're also going to be doing a little bit of a, um, just to make the video a little bit more interesting, a trail ride kind of out in the Cedar Mountains, uh, West Desert area of Utah. So that way you guys can get a little bit of some great views, um, see a little bit of scenery and find out about these tires at the same time. As usual today, I got my trail dog Darby with me. So she's gonna be riding along. And uh, I just figured this video would be a little bit more interesting so you don't have to stare at a stranger's face that you don't know the whole video. All right, so about the tires. Got about 45,000 miles on them right now. General tire gives you a 50,000 mile tread life warranty. Um, I'm down to about anywhere between five and six 30 seconds on the tires. So they're still good for pavement use. Uh, I do a lot of off-roading though, and so I will probably be switching them out pretty quick and then just selling them for a couple hundred bucks probably for the, the tread life that they have left. So the tread life warranty is going to vary depending on the type of tire that you got. These are 275 60R20s, which comes out to about a 33 inch tire. Um, if you get different sizes, I think they have tread life warranty up to 55,000 miles, so just kind of pay attention to the sizes that you get if that's important to you. I've only had one failure on these tires. Um, I had one puncture on Skyline Drive uh, with some sharp rocks. Um, it was easily patched and I haven't had a problem since. I also don't have any problem with chunking or uh, the, the tread tearing up, which I'm kind of surprised with, with as much rocky high mountain terrain as I do, that they've held up really, really well. And here I almost had an antelope. So what do I like about these tires? Well. They do have a lot of things that they do really well. Um, snow, they actually perform extremely well. Uh, these tires are a three mountain peak rated tire, so for severe snow rated. Uh, that was important to me just because I do live in the mountains and I go up to the ski areas quite a bit. So I wanted something that was very competent in the snow without having to go to a dedicated snow tire. I've never really been limited by the tire in the snow. Uh, more so than I've been limited by the truck itself uh, running into a snow drift or, you know, the snow drifts being too tall, something like that. If you're comparing these, say, to a Falcon AT3W, they perform very similar. Um, I had those on an old FT50 I had, and they're a very similar tire in the snow. One thing these tires have that I really like, and I wish more tires had it, is around the rim, the, the bead of the tire kind of sticks out and protrudes a little bit to where it does protect the edge of the rim. So if you run it into a curb or rocks or anything like that, it does keep it from scuffing your rims up for the most part. And I know more tires used to do that, but not too many do these days, so I really like that feature of the General Grabbers. Visually on these tires, you'll notice a lot of similarities between the BFG KO2 AT and the General Grabber ATX. Um, a lot of people will say that you know General copied their design and aesthetically I think that's probably true. They, they did take a lot of the tread characteristics. The sidewall is a little bit different but um, for the most part it is the same General design. Um, but I think General Grabbers did a lot better job with the siping uh, which the BFG kind of caught up to. Um, but originally, anybody that had the old BFG ATKOs um, knows how horrible they were in the rain. So I think that's something that Grabber did really well when they kind of took over this tread design, um, made it their own, and, and improved the rain performance. Because in the rain, these tires do really well um, compared to that, you know, the traditional BFG uh, AT tread design. As far as miles per gallon on these, uh, gas mileage wasn't really affected all that much, I don't think, by the tread design. Uh, the tire is a little bit heavier than what I was running before. Uh, before I had some passenger rated tires that were the stock size, so they were an inch shorter and quite a bit lighter. Um, these are LT tires and obviously they're an inch taller, so they did lose a little bit of MPG, but I was only limited to one MPG loss. Um, over the stock tires, which really, for all terrain tires, everything considered is not that bad. I didn't have any problems with a lot of vibrations or um, trouble balancing them or anything like that. I, I do rotate these tires every 5,000 miles and they rotate out and, and balance out really easily. So I've never had any issues with that. Um, you know, that also probably contributes to the wear that I've experienced is that I do rotate them really, really frequently. 
but you know it, it just like anything else you know the, the more maintenance that you do the longer your things will last so keep that in mind when it comes to tire rotations now if you're in a lot of gravel areas or rocky areas uh, i will say that this tread design does like to hold and throw rocks um, I have a lot of little rock chips in my fender wells, uh, on the lips of my fender wells that these uh, tires have thrown rocks into, so you kind of have to keep on top of that with touch up paint and whatnot, especially in salty areas. Um, the area I'm in, we use a lot of salt on the roads, so um, during the winter time I have to be really, really careful about that and be on top of it just so I don't have any uh, uh, rust problems that start that I don't need or, or want. Um, but aside from that, I mean, if you can live with how much they throw rocks, um, you know, that is annoying. And if you're in a gravel area, it might be something you want to consider. Um, if you don't have a whole lot of gravel or, or small rocks or things like that, then it may not be as big of an issue. Another thing to note about these tires, while we kind of look at this next clip, this next clip's cool. It's a, some wild horses that I found out in the uh, West Desert. I was able to get on, on video, which is kind of cool. But as we watch that video, um, another thing to kind of note about them is the noise that these tires make as they age. Like I stated earlier, I rotate my tires about every 5,000 miles, so I'm really on top of that. And even with that, they do have a lot of increased road noise. Um, so if that's something that bothers you, it is significantly louder the older they get. Not anything where it's going to drown out your radio or anything like that. They definitely don't sound like a mud tire, but you definitely hear the that kind of whirring noise of uh, the tire tread as it ages so that's something to keep in mind it is somewhat annoying to me at this point so you know keep that in mind this i kind of thought was funny these cows were up on the side of a mountain and i think they were confused thinking they were goats but this is the first time i've ever seen cows grazing on grazing on the side of a mountain so i thought that was funny So in the mud, these tires perform about like you would expect any all-terrain to perform in the mud. Uh, they'll probably get you out of something that you accidentally get into or if you thought it was, you know, softer than it, you know, turned out to be. Um, but I, I wouldn't say you'd want to purposely go into mud bogs or anything like that with them. Um, of the times that I have gotten into mud, that's usually during our spring runoff is when I see the most mud around here in the mountains. And it does perform well in those conditions, but usually I try to stay out of it just because I know, you know, the limitation of the tire and that they're not a dedicated mud tire. Uh, but the spring runoff situations that I've been in, it, it's performed really well. I did get these tires in some significant mud last spring um, that I probably would not have been able to get through if I'd have kept going. Um, I ended up turning around and they got me out of where I needed to be. There was one other situation where I did get stuck in the mud flats out in the West Desert, uh, kind of near where the salt flats are. And anybody familiar with the uh, Utah landscape and where I'm talking about, uh, a dedicated mud tire probably wouldn't have done much better in those conditions. Um, but, you know, that being said, I did get stuck. I was able to get out with traction boards, so it wasn't the end of the world. Um, but they definitely slicked over and, and were not much help out in the salt flats. Overall, I've really enjoyed these tires. Um, they do really well on the road. They kind of do everything really well, which is kind of what you would expect from an all-terrain tire to begin with. Um, but, you know, they've done everything I've asked them to and, and held up really well. If you're thinking about getting these tires, they are a little bit less expensive per tire than a BFG AT. Um, and they are, I believe, less expensive than the Falcon AT3Ws. And I think it performs just as uh, admirably as either one of those tires. So, you know, overall, I would say, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I was thinking about um, buying them again, but I think next tire purchase I go with, I'm probably going to go with something a little bit more aggressive just because of the off-roading I do. So I'm likely going to move to a Patagonia MT and see how those go. Um, but it's not any reflection on the, the type of tires or the uh, the experience I've had with these tires. I would definitely recommend them, and, and I'll probably run them again at some point in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, that's all that I have for today. And um, if you enjoyed it, you know, go ahead and hit the like button. That'll help me out. Um, 
you can subscribe if you want to. My video updates are kind of sporadic, but I have been doing more content here lately. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and y'all have a great day.